All right, we start with this. The Council for Higher Education is investigating some issues regarding governance at the Uni University of South Africa. Amongst those issues raised was poor management, the collapse of good governance and uh, poor leadership. And of course, this university has been in the news for the wrong reasons. Professor Barney Pachana now says that urgent action is needed to rescue it from the brink of disaster. He is Professor Emeritus of Law at the University of South Africa. And of course, he was principal and vice chancellor between 2001 and 2010. Professor Barney Pachana joining us now. Professor, thank you very much. Um, you're, you're writing after reports emerged about the vice chancellor, uh, Professor Puleng Lenkabula, and her affinity for the uh, finer things in life. Uh, you, you say this is part of the reckless management uh, that has really characterized this university for a while now we'll talk about the past but what has been your experience of her professor langabula was uh, appointed i think in 2020 she had been deputy vice chancellor at the university of the free state indeed uh, uh, in her earlier years uh, she was at unisa when i was uh, vice chancellor of unisa so it's somebody that i know and indeed, she's somebody that I, I would have encouraged uh, her progression in every other way. And indeed, I served on the council of uh, Wits University when she was dean of students there. So, so she's got quite a, a track record in, uh, in, in, in higher education. So I'm not one of those who say that she was a totally uh, inappropriate uh, appointment. But it is in the practice of being a chief executive officer from the moment she came to the university that our, that our eyebrows were raised. And, and I think it is in the actions at that time that by all accounts, the council of the university did nothing to rein the new vice chancellor in as they should have. Uh, in the normal things that one thinks are small and minor, but they are not like the question of overspending of the budget, like overspending on the budget for an official, in the official residence, the budget in the, in the um, uh, uh, official motor vehicle for the vice chancellor. In those things that may look small, the council should have stepped in and indicated to the vice chancellor, this is how things are done, but they did not. So you, you really want to ask yourself, why did they not intervene? when they should have. And the answer for me is really in that the Council of the University, according to Professor Makanya, from 2015, had been invaded, if you like, uh, by elements who really did not have the well-being of the institution at heart. And for that reason, the appointment uh, of Professor Lengabule, although I'm not suggesting she's part of it, the appointment of Professor Lengabule may be part of a plan uh, of the takeover of the university that started in 2015. That's a matter of grave concern to me. Professor Mosia is saying it was a coup d'etat in, in 2015, and, and you say that the professor is understating uh, how things changed at that point. I mean, how was it allowed to happen that in 2015 that there was this huge uh, turning point and, and you talk about um, the, the loss of skills, the loss of academic rigor, um, UNISA becoming a, a degree factory. How was it allowed to happen? It allowed to happen because uh, you, 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 you hollow out all the critical elements of the institution. You remove all the people um, who may be standing in the way of where, uh, where people want to interfere in the management and administration of the university. Um, you hollow out the systems of governance and administration, the policies, you change them. You change policies to suit uh, particular ends. You remove any possibility. That's what happens in state capture in South Africa at that time. You put there people who are not going to frustrate uh, the access to resources that one needs. And that is what happened uh, at UNISA since 2015. 
All right, very quickly, you say that the council must be dissolved, the, the vice chancellor should face a disciplinary and an administrator uh, should be appointed. And uh, le let's just quickly look at the big picture because many universities are in the spotlight for some of the things you have spoken about. Um, you, you said that this is, was in the name of transformation. You've spoken about racial tensions and now um, among some of the academics. But transformation is is required. Um, so, so how do you get it right, Prof? The transformation is an ongoing issue that uh, any university in our country must get uh, hooked in. But the point I make in the article that it must never be at the expense of the essence and the idea of a university. The elements of the university must be there. Uh, academic excellence uh, remains vital and important research and output and teaching and learning. What happened at UNISA is that those elements of the university in teaching and learning, in making sure that academic staff provide, are provided with the essential elements for them to do the work they do, publications, etc., the supervision of postgraduate students, all those elements of the university are gone. And finally, what appears to have happened at university, university is a place where I, of ideas and of excellence. It seems that even the idea of expressing uh, uh, different opinions and even contradictory opinions uh, seems to have been quashed. The Black Forum, we understand, was ruling the roost like a, a rod of, in, in, with a rod of iron. And people were scared, were afraid, people were losing their jobs, others were being put under, under disciplinary action in large numbers. So, so there was reason to be concerned about what was going on. And in public, the, the view of the university was really very poor, like uh, degree factory stories that we heard a few years ago. No, those are sufficient to really cause concern. For me, I've, I've, I've got three law degrees from the University of South Africa. And there was no way that I, I, I would keep quiet because it really means that my law degrees in the University of South Africa, three of them, would amount to nothing. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Emeritus of Law at the University of South Africa, Professor Barney Pachiana, very concerned about the institution that he once headed.